People spend more time on social media today than they do in the scriptures. People spend more time reading blogs than they do in the scripture. So can we talk about the scripture for a few minutes? 66 books of the Bible written over a 1,500-year time span. Do you understand how long 1,500 years is? If I go back 1,500 years from right now, we're at 515 A.D. There hasn't even been a British Empire yet. That's a long time ago. Okay? 1,500 years. 66 books are written by over 40 writers from three different continents in three different languages. We got kings, we got prisoners, we got soldiers, military men. We got shepherds, we got farmers, we got a physician. We got a tax collector who's a mafia guy. (laughs) And you put all these guys' books together over 1,500 years. Now, many of them lived in different generations and don't know what the other guy wrote. You put them all together and you get a perfectly harmonized book. Do you know what that's like? That's like looking at 40 different writers over the last 1,500 years and saying, write a chapter of a novel, putting the whole thing together after 1,500 years and having it make any sense. But not only that, it gets even better. If you look at the Old Testament, the Old Testament's 39 books written over 1,100 years. And the last book of the Old Testament is written 400 years before Jesus is even born. I mean, go back 400 years from right now. There's no Atlanta Braves. You don't even have the Falcons yet. You don't have the United States. I mean, the Pilgrims just got on the boat. That's a long time. The last book was written 400 years before Jesus was even born. Now, you got these 39 books written by all these different authors for over 1,100 years, many of them living in different generations, not knowing what the other guy wrote. And you know what these guys did? They made predictions about the Messiah. Things like he'd ride in Jerusalem on a donkey, he'd be betrayed by a friend, he'd be born in Bethlehem, he'd be called out of Egypt, he would be sold for 30 pieces of silver, he'd be crucified. And they made over 300 predictions with the last one being made 400 years before Jesus was even born. And do you know Jesus fulfilled all 300 of those predictions? So... There's a scientist named Dr. Peter Stoner who has since gone to heaven, but he was an expert in probability. Do you know what probability is? If I have a five-gallon paint bucket and I have nine white tennis balls and I have one yellow tennis ball and I shake them all up and I blindfold somebody and I say, reach in, grab one ball, the chance of picking out that one yellow tennis ball is one in ten. Well, he's an expert in this. So Dr. Stoner wants to know what is the probability that anybody can fulfill these prophecies? So he doesn't do the work himself. He employs 600 science students from 12 different classes. And they spent years of research. Not years. They spent months of research. The the National American Scientific Council reviewed their work and said not only was their work accurate, but it was conservative. So what I'm about to share with you is conservative. Please remember that. So they said, all right, what are the chances that any human being from any human being in the world from the time of the birth of Christ until the end of the second millennium, 2,000 years, could fulfill just eight of the prophecies? So here's the eight prophecies they chose. Christ, Christ to be born in Bethlehem. That's Micah wrote that. Christ to be preceded by a messenger. Isaiah and Malachi in different generations wrote that. Christ entered Jerusalem on a donkey. Zechariah in a totally different generation wrote that. Christ to be betrayed by a friend. The psalmist in a completely different generation wrote that. And there's the rest of the eight. They took those eight prophecies. Said, what is the chance any human being over 2,000 years could fulfill those eight prophecies? You know what the, after all their calculations, you know what the chances are? One in 10 to the 17th power. Now what in the world is that? 10 to the 17th is a one with 17 zeros behind it. I don't even know how to say that number. And I have an engineering degree. It's not gazillion billion. I got news for you. Okay, but I can illustrate that number. If I have that many silver dollars, I have no place on earth to store them. I have to just spread them out all over the ground. And if I do, if I have that many silver dollars and I spread them out all over the ground, I will cover the entire state of Texas two feet deep with those silver dollars. 
Now, gather them all in, mark one of the silver dollars. Shuffle them all up, redistribute them all over Texas, blindfold a guy in Oklahoma, put him in a helicopter, start flying over Texas. Remember, it takes two days to drive through Texas. At any point, he can say, let down. Then he gets out of the helicopter, still blindfolded. The chances of him picking up that one silver dollar is one in 10 to the 17th power, which means that is the chances that any human being could have fulfilled eight of those prophecies, yet Jesus fulfilled all eight prophecies. So Dr. Stoner said, what about 16 prophecies? So they do all these hours of calculation, he and the 600 science students. And they say that the chances any human being could have fulfilled 16 prophecies is 1 in 10 to the 45th power. That's a 1 with 45 zeros behind it. Don't even ask me to write that number down. Now, if I have that many silver dollars, I can't store them on the earth. It's too many. i got to make a big ball of silver dollars. i got to make a sphere of them, okay? You know how big this sphere would be? The diameter of that sphere would be 60 times the distance of the earth to the sun. If you want mileage, it's 5.5 billion miles. Now, mark one of those silver dollars. Shuffle them all up. Blindfold the guy. Put him in a jet plane. It will take 400 years nonstop flight just to fly around the ball. At any point, he can say, let down. Now, remember, he might have to dig 2.75 billion miles into the center because the mark one might be in the center. But the chances of him picking up that one silver dollar is 1 in 10 to the 45th power. That is the chances that any human being could have fulfilled 16 of the prophecies. Yet Jesus fulfilled all 16. So can I blow your mind? Can I really blow your mind one more time? Can I blow it? So Dr. Stoner said, what about 48 prophecies? What are the chances anybody could fulfill 48 prophecies? So they do hours and hours of calculations. And you know what they found out? It's 1 in 10 to the 157th power. Now, how big is that number? I can't use the silver dollar. It's too big. I got to go to a smaller item. I got to go to an electron. Now, do you know how small an electron is? Let me just tell you. If you got a one-inch line of electrons, straight line, one inch, and I start counting tonight, and I don't go to sleep, I will count. If I count 250 per minute, it will take me 19 million years to count that one-inch line of electrons. Now, if I have that many electrons, one in 10 to the 157 power, i got to make a sphere of electrons. You know how big a sphere would be? It would be as far as man has ever seen into space. 13 billion light years. Now, mark one of those electrons. <laughs> Blindfold the guy, put him in a space shuttle, send him into space. At any point, he can say, stop. The chances of picking out that one marked electron is the chance that any human being could have fulfilled 48 of those prophecies. Yet Jesus fulfilled all 48. So can we review here? Can we review? Okay, we got, we got 39 books written over 1,100 years by all these guys. That many of them don't even live in the same generation. They make these predictions about the Messiah with the last one being 400 years before he was even born. And Jesus fulfills all 300? And you tell me the Bible doesn't apply to today? You're stupid. <laughs> 